I left Freetown, traveled to Guinea Conakry. From Guinea Conakry, I went to Mali. From Mali, Burkina. From Burkina Faso, finally I entered Niger. When I arrived at the border between Niger and Libya. When we arrived at the border, over 100 Africans, we arrived at night. And some of the traffickers are coming across, around us. When they come, they ask us, hey guys, what is your plan? And we told them that we are going down to Libya, to Tripoli. And they said, they asked us, how much, how much money do you have? And we asked them, no, you can't ask us that question. Just tell us the amount of money that we are going to pay for our transportation from the border to Tripoli. And they told us that it's $500. And he said, okay, no problem. You are going to you pay this money and we take you to the jetto. We call it, they have a place where we call the jetto. And we pay this money, they take us to the jetto. We are in the jetto for time for five days before we can board the vehicle. And each vehicle that we are boarding will be some like 30 people sitting in the vehicle. While we are boarding the vehicle and traveling to Fire City, we are crossing the desert, one of the largest deserts in the world, we use about seven days to cross that desert. And it is really hard when you sit under the hot sun, we travel day and night, till when we can only get a stop when we need water, when someone requires for water. And that's all the time they will come down and give us water. And those, most of the guys that are, are, that are escorting us, they are, they are well armed with AK-47. So we can't say much for them because they are the ones that are controlling us from the border till to Saba City. So when we arrive at Saba City, these people take us to a jet tour again. We are the, there is a con combination between these two traffickers. When they take us to the jet tour, they kidnap us. When they kidnap us, and they collect all our passports from, our, from, from us, and they ask us, we are supposed to pay pay money before they release us to go down to Tripoli. And we said, for what again? They say we are on that. They have already captured us. So they ask us, so they give they give they even provide a cell phone for us to call our family home. So when we make this call to our family, so we call some money about 500 US dollars before they release us. Some of us we are fortunate to have that money so they release us. But others they don't have so we leave them in, in this center. So while we are going, we, are, we did not have enough money again. So even to find food for ourselves, there is no money. So at one time, we went to a place where so many Africans, every morning, Africans go to this place, over 1,000 to find job. We sit around this place to find job, where uh, a Libyan guys come around, told us that he needs someone who do some domestic job. And some of us went there just to raise some amount of money. So we went there to do this job. After we did this job, on our way, on our way coming back, why the Libyan police they stop us when they stop us and ask us where are, where we are from, and we told them that we are from this place. And they decide to arrest us. When they arrest us, and we talk to them. We explain our problems and they give us and they told, and they told us that hey guys, this place is not safe. And we said, yes, we know, yeah, it's not safe. We too, we are trying to return back home. That's why we are trying to find, raise some amount of money to go back. He said, okay, no problem, we will leave, we will leave you. Because you have already told us that you want to go home back. But actually, the journey is a bloody journey. As soon as you arrive, the city of Saba City will know that it's a deadly zone. No one, no joke. Till we travel to Tripoli, when we arrive to Tripoli, we see the traffickers again. The traffickers are the people that take us from this point, from one point to another. For any point we move to, they need to take money from us. So we are going to pay them transport fees and at the same time they will pay them again for, for us for us to remove from them, for them to release us. So we have been tired with this kind of situation, paying twice for any movement. So until we went to the beach, we don't have enough money again to do this crossing. And if you don't have money, you will be there. Even if it's 10, 5, 6 years, as long as you have money, you can cross the sea. So this is the constraint that we are facing in this place. And most of my brothers are still there. 
but some of them don't have money to cross the Mediterranean to go down to Italy. And uh, their whole focus is to go. So it's, not, it's better for them to stay because I decide that I should not stay here because I don't have money. Even if I stay without no money, I can't go. All the money can make me to cross the sea to go to Italy. So I decided back to find, raise something and return home. That was the final thing that I undergo in that space. Well, if I have the money, what I've undergo to, I won't, I won't go because it's really a danger. It's, it's really a danger in travel across that road. Because you see, you find yourself at any time you die. Because most of the guys that are passing around, they are all armed. They are armed. You don't have weapon. How can you face in there? If someone stop, hey, you are hurt. Shouting at you. Take all what you have. So even if I have the money, I go now. They will do the same thing to me. They will remove my money from me. So I can't even go. Now so now, me, what, most of my brothers that are preparing to go now to live there, please, I don't want you to take this with because I'm one of them just from that place. I've undergone a lot of problems. They have took my money from me, so I don't have nothing to do. And you can't fight them because they are well armed. So please, I do. I want to tell you that to appeal to you, don't go, because the world is very dangerous, and you can't fight anyone. There. That's the final advice I have for you.